So you got yourself into sales. Why would you do that? Just kidding, it's going to be all right. You're going to be okay. Sales is one of the most difficult, but one of the absolutely most rewarding professions, jobs, and businesses that you can have. Trust me, I've done sales and I actually was one of the best marketers in the world. I was the head sales consultant for Frank Kern. So on a very in-depth level, a master level, you may say, I understand how sales work. I understand how sales connects to marketing, advertising, and every other part of business. And I'm gonna walk you through, as a beginner, how you, just getting started, can become a sales master, close a lot more sales, face less objections, and really just perform better in any sales situation. Number one, it starts with changing your understanding of what sales actually is, because there is a huge myth that your job is to pressure people, that your job is to be witty, that your job is to sell, 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 and just get yourself in their face and talk over people and do a lot of things that you're told to do in sales that are completely wrong. Sales, when done correctly, it is easy, it takes very little time, is conversational, there's no pressure, and you feel good about what you are selling. Sales is not about pressuring. What sales is about is being yourself and truly helping the customer help themselves find the best solution to their problems or to find the best benefit or solution that they want. Number two, this is a simple and very easy one. Just breathe, relax, and realize that in sales, you are simply talking to other human beings, people who have problems they want solved, who have issues going on in their lives that they want taken care of, and who are seeking certain benefits and advantages and things that they need to improve different parts of their lives. And you are doing them a service by helping them get these things they need or want. So feel good about yourself knowing that you are truly doing one of the most impactful jobs there are in the world, and that's helping people get what they need. Number three, you need to practice. Just like I'm talking right here to the camera, you need to practice doing videos just like this, talking to yourself, talking to others. You can even practice with a friend, with your dad, with your mom, with your grandpa, with whoever you want to. You need to practice, number one, speaking. If you want to be really good at sales, using your hands and watching your tone, watching how fast you speak, and just being presentable in your voice and how confident you sound and how confident you look and feel to other people as they are seeing or talking with you. Because this is number four, number five, this is one of the most important parts of sales. People buy a lot of off of confidence, confidence in yourself and what you're saying and knowing in detail what you're offering is so important for any sales scenario to go really well. So be confident in yourself, practice a lot and practice the fundamentals of sales which is tonality speed of the conversation your questions you ask and knowing how to cover objections which is number five or six i've lost count one of the most important parts of sales is knowing how to cover basic objections which i'll walk you through right now number one how do you cover the objection when someone says that seems like it's too much or they're basically suggesting to you or you can just kind of tell that the reason for them not buying is the price. There are a few ways that you can cover this objection. You may use more than one of them because this is actually kind of a false objection because it's not really the price that's bothering someone. The reason why most people won't buy, it's not because of the price, it's because they don't actually feel certain that your product or service is going to get them the result they want or take care of their problems. Because do you know what sales really is? It's the process of helping someone else feel more certain that a certain product or service can help them get a desired result they want. And if you can help someone feel that feeling, regardless of the price, regardless of what it even is, regardless of the benefits, the features, you name it, they will invest in buying it because they feel like and decided for themselves. This will for sure get me these results, so I'm willing to put up my money for it. So here's how to cover this nasty objection. Number one, ask this question back. Well, if it wasn't for the price, is there any other reason you wouldn't buy? Just be honest and upfront with me. Is there anything else that makes you kind of hmm, huh, not feel like this is something you want to do? Because here's the thing. A lot of times it is not price. Again, like I said, it's not price. It's they actually don't feel like you've covered something enough or you don't understand their problem enough. or You don't understand what they truly want enough for them to feel certain what you're offering will get them the results they need. Or maybe they just need a different amount of information. Another question you could ask 
is if it's not the price, what else could it be? A really good question you can ask as well is, okay, if it, the price is the issue, if we did it in installment payments or separated the payments apart, would that help you out? If they say yes, then great, you got a customer. If they say no, then ask how you would like them to work with you to make it more budgetable. Always be asking questions to move the conversation forward. Wherever the objection goes, continue it forward. You are not to fight any objection at all. That's another huge part of sales, is realizing you are not to fight the customer, not on any objection they give or anything they say. You are to either agree with it or nonchalantly put into a direction that will reinforce what you are trying to offer them. And finally, if they have a price objection, what you can do is offer a cheaper alternative that you have as well. So for example, if you're an agency and you sell ads consulting or ads work where you run someone's ads for them, if they really truly you believe and it seems like they can't afford it, then just go, okay, that's great. We do have a course on that that's a lot cheaper. You can learn how to do ads yourselves. Would you like that instead? and always be transitioning the conversation to some other place where it still gets you to land the customer and still helps them get the result they need. Another objection you might hear is, I just don't feel sure about this. Then you can ask, well, what would make you feel more sure? What do you think is the real thing you're looking for that would make you go, wow, I really want this product or service. I'm all in. What would that be that you would need to feel like that? Next, I'm gonna say something that some sales professionals would debate, would argue with, would say it's not true. But from my experience, it seems to be the best way to do sales. Do not, under any circumstances, follow a sales script. What you should follow instead is have a sales guideline, a guideline and script of approximate things you could possibly say during each part of the sales call. So during the introduction, during a phase where you're questioning them, during a phase where you're identifying and making sure these are the problems or solutions they're looking for, during the closing phase, during every part of a sales conversation, make sure you are following a guideline outline of going through each part of this process. You do not want to speak word for word, hello sir, my name is John, how can I help you? Hello, my, my name is John, would you like to hear more about her? You do not want to follow a sales script or sound salesly, you will immediately lose the call or at least for a lot of the times you're gonna. So what you wanna do is follow a guideline. Again, approximate things you can say during each part of the sales conversation. This is much more natural and it will make sure that your sales conversations go a lot more smoothly and that you are received better by the consumer. The last but most important sales strategy for a beginner or expert that I can give you is to make sure that you follow up with every no and every yes. Every yes person who buys, you should be upselling, and every no, someone who says can't do it, can't afford it, you name it, they just won't do it, downsell them. Or follow up with them on the same offer, say is now a better time, we have this extra feature we're willing to give to you, we have a low discount we're willing to give to you, we have this or that that we're willing to do to work with you. Please, please follow up. It will ensure that you have very high conversion rates and that you close way more customers and make way more money. That's it my friend, those are some strategies and tips you can use, whether you're a beginner or whether you're an expert on how to get better at sales. I thought I'd go through that because sales is an important skill to learn. You can use sales to sell ideas, to sell your wife on how you're gonna mow the lawn, on you name it, doing the dishes, you name it. You use sales more in life than you realize. It's one of the most important skills that anyone can master. And the more you practice what I've gone through, you will be much more successful at sales. You'll be able to get much more closing rates and sell yourself much better as well. So I appreciate you for watching. Have an amazing day. Comment and let me know what you thought of this video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, like it, and I appreciate you so much for watching.